I think one of the rentals that I'm about to show you today would actually be a pretty good flip. TJ, this is your video. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey, real estate investors, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. As always, I'm your host, James Wise, coming to you from my home studio uh, right now. You know, you guys know the deal. This is, uh, this is the new normal at the moment. Uh, right now, it's about lunchtime at the Wise household, so you guys might hear my son making uh, some noises. He's over there chowing down on some cheese and crackers at the moment uh, with my wife. Uh, so just disregard him. <laughs> this is uh, this is how things roll at the moment, though. But uh, TJ, bro, uh, another two properties that you sent me that you're very interested in. Um, you know, just a little recap of where I'm at with you, bro. We recently put together a deal. Uh, we closed it. My team is in the process of renovating it. That's a single family in Cleveland. I'm gonna go ahead and put that show in the show notes below. Uh, recently, I just. Um, I, I just analyzed a couple stinkers for you, some properties that uh, we're a little interested in, but I, I think we we could do some uh, something better. So I don't I don't really like these two, and I also feel the same way about this first one, three two seven two Euclid Heights Boulevard, Cleveland Heights, Ohio four four one one eight, listed by Howard Hanna almost two months ago now, just a month ago, right? Thirty seven days at forty five thousand dollars. Now, uh, from the jump. That doesn't seem like a bad price, but I don't like this property because there's a few things that are sticking out to me. Number one, we are like totally in the dark on this particular property. What this is, is a property that needs rehab and it's a short sale. The agent was very brief with what they said, but what they said, Cleveland Heights, great location, two bedrooms and two baths with one car garage, shared drive, needs rehab, short sale, approved go and show, right? So here's some things that pop out at me that made me dislike this deal. Number one, we know it needs rehab, but I don't have anything to go off of, right? All I have is uh, this one picture, right? Just a, a picture of the front of the house that doesn't really tell me anything, right? So we, we know that we need to get in there and rehab everything to make it uh, ready to go for a tenant. So to me, that means, you know, bath, kitchen, walls, floors, the whole shebang, right? So right there, we're going to be, you know, probably above $20,000 uh, minimum, right? You know, we could, we could go as high as 40, right? It could be 20, could be 40, right? Depending on, on what's going on. So we kind of got to go into this with a little bit of unknowns. Another huge issue that I have is the shared driveway, right? What you like they say you want to buy the cheapest house on the block and, and and that's true right that's a good strategy you don't ever want to buy the most expensive house but what you also don't want to do is buy the redheaded stepchild you don't want to buy the outlier in the neighborhood right if you have a neighborhood where all the houses are these nice little bungalows and then there's just this weird ass little house that's just totally different you don't want to do that right so cleveland heights a lot of houses have at least three bedrooms. This one only has two. So that's a little redheaded stepchild. And then this shared driveway, this is not common um, for, for this area, right? Most of the homes have their own driveway. So I believe that's always going to be an issue. And then the last issue that I have that really makes me hate this property for you, it, well, I have two more issues. Uh, the second last issue that makes me hate this property for you is what they've said about the point of sale, right? Now, as far as point of sale goes, I'm not going to burn a bunch of time talking about that. In the show notes below, I've got the point of sale video that explains the point of sale process to you and anybody else who isn't aware. So if you're not familiar with point of sale in the Cleveland market, pause the video right now, check that one out, then come back to me. Now, assuming you know uh, what the deal is with the point of sale, okay? The issue is with this one. Now, there's, a, there's another section that you guys can't see, right? It's private. It's only for brokers. It's not to be shared with the public. But in that section, the agent had said, the seller will make no repairs. Buyer has to order and pay for the point of sale. Well, you have to, first of all, order the point of sale for a property you don't even own. They're going to need cooperation with the actual seller to do that, number one. So that strategy is 
you know, bo- booty. That's a booty hole right there. That's a crappy strategy. Number two, you got to pay for it, right? That, that, that doesn't make any sense. And then, of course, you have to agree to assume it, right, and fix all those issues. But we don't know what you're agreeing to fix or what you're agreeing to assume. And then this takes me to my last issue with this property, which makes me want you to just run the other way. It's a short sale, dude. Short sales are terrible. Oh my God, short sales are anything but short. Working with banks on short sales, uh, it's a nightmare. It could take six, eight months, 12 months. It could take two years to get some of these things to go through. And then the banks, they, they don't really care. Like, dude, they'll just pull out of the deal at the last minute. So you could have put a lot of money into this property, right? You could be out there paying you know, time, effort, money to pay for the point of sale, actually get the point of sale ordered, get quotes on how much the point of sale is going to cost, get you know, pay for home inspections, right? You could have so much time and money and effort wrapped up into this property over the course of like six to 12 months or something. And then at the last minute, the bank just pulls out and says, hey, we don't want to sell. Like for all these reasons, man, this, this just, I would just run away from this one, dude. Uh, the, the rehab is going to be huge. Uh, at least 20 could be as much as 40. We have very limited information. We're always going to be the redheaded stepchild. Uh, there's just so many things that are stacking up, stacking up, stacking up that there's, you know, there's, there's paths of le- uh, lesser resistance out there. So like I told you in your last video, bro, you don't have to outrun the bear. All you have to do is outrun your buddy. Uh, so this is not going to be the property that we want to go for. And especially with the fact that at the end game, we still end up with the house that's uh, got a shared driveway and less bedrooms and everything else. No point to putting up with all that BS to, to get into this one. Uh, so what I want to do now, I want to go to a word from the sponsors of today's shows, uh, today's show, and then we're going to get into the second property that I found for you that I actually uh, want to go a totally different route than what you're probably thinking. I don't even think that one makes sense as a rental. I think that is actually a flip. You may have found yourself a flip, my man. Good day, everyone. It's Angela Ramora here, your favorite Australian and the founder and owner of Ohio Cashflow. Over the last five years, Ohio Cashflow has established itself as the most reputable turnkey real estate investment company in the country. We offer solid B-class properties in Toledo, Ohio. We work and live in the same areas that we sell in. So when we sell your property, your tenants become our neighbors. We only take on a handful of investors every month. So for your chance to work with one of the best in the business, please fill out our investor application form, which you can find in the video notes below. Thanks for listening. And as we say down under, I'll catch you later, mate. Is that it? Yeah, we're done. All right, cool. Based in Indianapolis, Indiana, FS Houses is the premier investment property brokerage with an in-house property management department that can take care of all those unwanted landlord headaches. FS Houses can offer you the complete turnkey solution as well as wholesale properties offered to you at a discounted rate. With a network of thousands of active investors, wholesalers, and brokers, FS Houses can help you sell your property for top dollar on the open market or in a hurry to motivated investors seeking distressed real estate. Visit fshouses.com or call 317-492-9025 for more information on the Indianapolis, Indiana real estate. Hey, TJ, welcome back, man. Let's jump right into the second property you sent to me. 3802 Eastway Road, South Euclid, 44118. Listed a couple weeks ago uh, by owners.com, realtor out of there, $63,600. And it's a three-bed, two-bath bungalow. See, that's cool, right? This is a a solid property that, that fits in line with the neighborhood. South Euclid, man. See, this is the thing about South Euclid. Uh, South Euclid is a is a neighborhood that um, the prices, right? It's not really good. It doesn't make as much sense from a rental property perspective. There are a large majority of the property owners in South Euclid are owner occupied. So what we're going to see is we're going to see this market. The pricing is not going to be driven uh, in a way that makes sense for rental property investors, right? It's going to be driven um, by owner occupied people. And that's why this property, I don't even think we need to necessarily look at this as a rental. Uh, if you wanted to rent it, you could, you probably get about, you know, 1000 to like 1150 in rent uh, after we decked it out. 
But I don't even think that's the the move here, bro. The, the real move is probably to flip this sucker if you can get it for a right price. But I'm, I'm going to get into that. As far as the home, though, right, let's just talk about this. Just a solid little bungalow, three beds, two baths. We got to do, you know, like everything to this particular property, right? We got outdated kitchen. We got, uh, you know, we've got to repaint it. We got, you know, crummy looking carpet everywhere. The bathroom's got to go. You know, that thing is looking hideous. We need to deck this sucker out, make it look totally badass. We have to go one level above what we would normally do on a rental, but it's going to pay off for us because what I've got for you right here on the screen, dude, this is the comps, okay? This is this is where the, the flip makes sense. This is where the owner-occupied folks, they're driving this market. Now, we got some stuff here on the low. And by the way, these comps, these are properties that have sold within a quarter mile of this property over the last six months. I'm going to take your attention down to the, the two best ones, right? We got some on the low end, 79.9, 92.5. But then we start getting into well above 100,000. We got 110, 5, 111, and then the two that I really want to focus on: 135,000 on 3823 Warrendale Road, and then 152,900 on 3904 Warrendale Road. Now let's go take a a closer look at 3823 Warrendale Road. Now just like your property, this is also a three bed, two bath, and this is ideally. Uh, in a nutshell, essentially the look we would be going for, right? Like you, you saw the photos uh, <clears throat> of the property you're thinking about looking to, right? We need to take Eastway right now. It looks, you know, just crummy. We need to make Eastway look like this one, right? Neutral colors, nice hardwoods. They flow through all the rooms, right? We don't have to do anything structurally, right? The property appears to be structurally sound. We just cosmetically need to fix it up, make it look like this, put in a stainless steel package, right? Like the kitchen you're looking at, um, it, you know, essentially, uh, you know, from a, a mile high view, this is essentially the look that we would need to accomplish uh, for you in Eastway to get you a high price like this, to get you the 135 and up price point. So we would need to go in and do everything. So we're touching everything. Now, here's the thing. This one's got a finished basement, a semi-finished basement. The Eastway property does not have a semi-finished basement. So that that is going to uh, be a little something, but you know what we could do, uh, finishing off one room, not necessarily the biggest thing, but we could also just paint everything, make it look super fresh. A lot of times you do some nice spray paint of the, the top, like the, uh, the, the, the top of the ceiling of a basement, instead of throwing in like a drop ceiling, you paint all that black, it looks good. And, you know, we're going to need, you know, newer mechanicals, furnaces, hot water tanks, update electrical panel. And we're, of course, going to want to have an AC unit in there. If we're trying to get this type of pricing, right, we're going to need air conditioning. We can't just go in there and not do air conditioning. As for the other comp, the one down the road, 3904 Warrendale. This one, the reason it's sold for even more, right, this is all the way up. This is the highest, 152 uh, this one also finished basement, and this one instead of a three three two, it's a, actually a four two. But as far as the square footage goes, it, it, it's pretty similar, right? Um, but again, you know, this is like kind of the look we gotta go for. We got the flowing hardwoods throughout. We got the gray walls. We got the nice modern white kitchen. Everything is just looking beautiful. You know, nice tile work in, in the bathroom. Everything is good. So these right here, these are our inspirations. This is this is the look we're gonna be going for, right? So with these two comps, right, 135 and 152.9. Now, with what we have, what I think we could do is I believe with the, the information that I currently have on this particular property and just shooting you like a, a rough ballpark estimate, we probably will be somewhere in the forty to $50,000 price range to get you this level of quality. Now, I can't really narrow that down for you anymore. Um, the, the issue is, right, with the particular house we're looking at, it's a foreclosure, okay? This is another deal where you're not going to be able to do as much due diligence as you would normally like to do. You're not going to be able to get in there and you're not going to be able to check to see if the furnaces work, if the hot water tanks work, if there's issues with the plumbing, right? You're going to have to go into this with some, some level of unknowns, right? Uh, so just, you know, I have to give you a very wide range, but as far as a property of this size, assuming we got to get in there 
and, and do a lot of stuff, get new furnaces, get new ACs, things of that nature, you know, coming in, in the 50 K range, it, it shouldn't be an issue. If we got a budget of 50 K to play with, uh, we could put it together. Um, and that's, you know, factoring in a lot of the unknowns. So as far as the pricing goes though, right. Uh, currently listed at 63,600. Now that is essentially what they're doing is this foreclosure is being ran through like an auction site. It's called hubzoo.com. I'm going to go to the website right now so you can see what this looks like. They're, they're running it as an online auction and you may be thinking you can pick it up cheaper than you actually can. Cause if you look on the screen right now, it says the current highest bid is 42,000, but right under that, it says reserve, not, you know, it says reserve met. No. So essentially what that means, right? Combining that with the data we have from the MLS is the bank has set the reserve price at 63,600, but on the, the bidding, the auction site, they're bidding it up. They started it lower. So currently as far as other people go, the highest bidder's at 42000 but the bank ain't going to take 42000 Essentially, what they're telling you is the bank isn't going to take a bid that's less than 60, 63600 In addition to that, there's, our, there's some other fees you have to pay on top of that. When you work with HubZoo and these types of uh, auction sites, it's, it's a whole pain in the ass. I'm not going to lie to you. The process sucks, uh, and there's more money you're going to have to pay. Uh, once we actually, you know, you put in the bid and we put in the bid through HubZoo and you get it accepted down here, property fees, buyer's premium, you're going to have to pay the greater of 5% of bid amount or $1,000. So you're going to have to pay that. Your earnest money, it's laid out for you right there, lesser of 3% of bid amount or $15,000. So once you come up with your price that it's actually accepted at, there's going to be additional tack on fees. But if you, if you want to take the dive and get through all this, and by the way, the other thing is you got to pay cash. They only accept in cash offers on this deal. And you couldn't do a finance deal on this because again, it's a foreclosure. Uh, the utilities and stuff are off. You know, the bank is not going to write you a loan on a home that is not uh, habitable. So if a home has no water, it has no heat, it has no electricity, you can't live in it. It's not habitable, right? So technically this home is not habitable as it sits. So you got to pay cash. So what I think, I think all the other bidders out there just based upon, uh, you know, what's going on in the neighborhood. And like, I mean, you got to think too, you might not only be dealing with real estate investors who are trying to make a profit on a flip. You might be dealing with, you know, folks that live in this neighborhood uh, that just want to own another house in this neighborhood. Or you might have, you know, like a, you know, wealthier person is looking for a property for the children, handyman special. I think the bidding is going to get bid up pretty high. I, I think you'd probably need to spend maybe 70K on this property to take it down. If you spent 70K and we had to put 50K into it, you'd be all into the deal for 120K. And as far as what it would sell for, I think we'd probably be targeting a price of 145,000 because I gave you the two other comps, one a little bit lower than that, one a little bit higher than that. I think with the level of finishes we could do for that $50,000 budget and like just the way we could present it, I think we would be priced right in there at 145. We would, we would do a bang up house. So that right there, if you bought it at 70, that'd be a, a gross profit of 25 K. But of course you got to pay 7% uh, real estate commission on that. In addition, you also have to pay, um, you know, a, a little bit of closing costs and stuff. So if you paid roughly, 10% of the 145, that's, you know, you're looking at around $14,000 in total cost, which is going to take you down to 131. So it would be a, a moderate profit, but you could, you could squeeze out an $11,000 profit, not bad for a totally passive investment. However, if you can pick it up for the bid reserve price at 63,600, you know, that's another seven G. So now you're close to making almost 20 K. That's a, it's a quick 20 K. And then of course, if you wanted to, you could always burr it out, but you know, the numbers, they're not that sexy as a uh, rental investment. Cause again, this particular neighborhood um, is going to be, you know, driven by those owner occupied folks. So I guess it's really all about how much uh, you can pick it up for on that acquisition, right? And if you want to make like a, you know, 10, 11 K over the course of a few months without really doing anything, I think that's a pretty decent investment. I mean, you know, if you're going to attempt to flip houses and you're going to literally 
contract out everything from analysis to renovation to this or that. Like the only thing that you're putting into the deal is the money. Um, you can't expect to go in there and make these thirty, forty thousand dollar profits. I mean, you know, you're just not adding enough to the deal for for people uh, to go out there and do that for you. Um, and then with this one, again, I, th I think it'll get kind of bid up. But if you could somehow score this thing for that 63600 if it doesn't get bid up before that, I mean, that's a really good scenario for an out-of-state investor doing a 100% passive flip, making almost $20,000. Because uh, it's pretty safe to say that uh, we would A, come in at or below the $50,000 budget, and B, pretty safe to say we would come in, if not right at that one hundred forty-five thousand dollar price point very 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 close to it so tj uh those are my thoughts on these two properties that you sent to me today let me know what you'd like to do everyone else if you are interested in working with me and my team one-on-one -on -one, like tj has been doing for the better part of this year you want to go to holtonwise.com click on the property search for sale tab click on the mls search and analysis show order yourself a package what we do folks it's all transparent it's, you know, as transparent look into the game as we can, right? This particular show, I'm not necessarily trying to sell you anything other than information. I'm just trying to, you know, give you my complete unbiased advice. If TJ wants to move forward on both of these properties, cool. If he doesn't, cool. As a matter of fact, I don't think he should do anything with that first property. And the last video I did for TJ were two more properties. So the last four properties TJ sent me, I told him, bro, I don't want you to do three of them. So I don't know where else you're going to get that type of transparent information. The way this program works is you guys pay up front and then you get a completely unbiased analysis from an investor who has sold over $200 million worth of real estate and currently runs a real estate portfolio of thousands of tenants. So I've been in this game a long time. I understand this market like the back of my hand. If you don't believe me, check out the many episodes we've had before this. This is episode 117 of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. Not all of them are launched publicly, by the way, right now. So you're not going to be able to go back and watch all 116 of them. Today, the way it works is I send these shows out to the person who paid for them in a private link until the properties are gone, until the dust settles. Then and only then do I release them publicly on Holton Wise TV for everybody else to view for free. I wouldn't want TJ to pay money on an analysis uh, such as this Eastway one. And the reason it got bid up all the way to 70K is because I released this to my 30,000 plus subscribers and you guys all bid the price up on them. That wouldn't be very good service to my dude TJ. So I keep this locked down. I keep it under wraps. TJ's the only guy watching this until that property is sold, gone off the market. Uh, but then of course I'll release it so you guys could all see and you guys could all learn a little something. So if you want to start working with me like TJ is, that's how you do it. Holtonwise.com, property search for sale, MLS search and analysis show. That's all I've got for you guys today. As always, I am James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys, put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Over 50% of those living in the greater Memphis area rent their home. This fact combined with the high price to rent ratio is why Forbes rates Memphis, Tennessee as one of the top real estate investment markets in the country. Memphis Investment Properties and their sister property management company, Reedy & Company Realtors, are among the largest and most trusted turnkey operations in this market. With over 30 years in business, a portfolio consisting of more than 2,700 active rentals, and an impeccable track record renovating over 6,000 single-family homes, it's no surprise they are one of the most reputable turnkey operations in the United States. Rent Tech Direct provides you with an easy to use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built-in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. You can manage work orders and even accept them online from your tenants. You can also share work order details with tenants or owners if you wish. With Rent Tech Direct, you'll also fill your vacancies faster than ever with the built-in marketing tools. 
Just enter the details of your property and RentTech will automatically provide you with a professional online website as well as syndicate them to popular websites such as Zillow, Trulia and Apartments.com to get your listing maximum exposure so it's rented fast. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.